Good evening, you're watching the news. A quick look at the headlines. Bharat Biotech's Covaxin is 81% effective. More trial data is expected soon. Effectiveness is based on early data. All of this will eventually be peer-reviewed in a publication. The Health Minister says 24-7 vaccination for uh, citizens at their convenience in private facilities across the country. The 13th straight day of a rise in daily average cases. 13 days of rising cases, a first since September, where there was a peak. Tax raids on outspoken Bollywood producers and actors, Tapsi Pannu and Anurag Kashyap. The government says that the IT department searches were based on specific information. The Maharashtra government attacks the centre over the raids. Expressing views is different from governments, not sedition is what the Supreme Court said and asks a petitioner who had made these allegations against Farooq Abdullah to pay 50,000 rupees. Kamal Hassan launches his campaign from MGR's constituency in Tamil Nadu. Meanwhile, the Congress and the DMK and seat sharing, no progress. The DMK offers 18 seats, the Congress wants 35. Rahul Gandhi says the emergency was a mistake, but it's different from what's happening today. BJP ministers hit back at Rahul over his remarks on the RSS. The Trinamool Congress wants the poll panel to end an image of the Prime Minister on a document which states that you've received your vaccine jab. A Karnataka minister quits after a video, a sex video emerges. A BJP minister quits after prodding from the central BJP. And Virat Kohli wants the narrative on spinning pitches in India to change. However, there is more at play than the pitch in the final test versus England. That starts tomorrow. With our top story, phase three results of Bharat Biotech's coronavirus vaccine, Covaxin, have been released this afternoon with the drug demonstrating 81% interim efficacy in preventing COVID-19 in those without prior infection after the second dose. This in a statement uh, made by the company today. My colleague uh, Rishika joins us now for more on this. Rishika, what exactly uh, is Bharat Biotech stating? And is this data submitted today good enough in terms of looking at it as a final set of efficacy data? Well, let's break this down for our viewers. Bharat Biotech has essentially said that their vaccine is 81% effective in preventing severe COVID-19 infection. The clinical trial was conducted on over 25,000 participants in India, making it the largest clinical trial in India. But let me just clarify, the efficacy data has been calculated on the basis of 43 out of 25,000 individuals that got the COVID-19 infection in the clinical trial. Now, out of this, when the placebo group, uh, there were 36 people in the placebo group and seven in the vaccine arm who actually got the COVID-19 infection. What experts say is that 81% efficacy is interim data at the moment. At least 130 infections in the clinical trial need to be documented in order for there to be more real and more final data as far as vaccine efficacy of the Bharat Biotech vaccine is concerned. But here's what we know so far, that the age group uh, of the clinical trial so far has been 18 to 98. Now, 98 is a significant number. We don't know how many uh, over the age of 90 were actually participants in the clinical trial, but this is significant because if the vaccine is actually 81% effective, then that means that those uh, with uh, those who are elders, uh, people above the age of 90 can also safely go ahead and take this vaccine. That's, remember, uh, the category that is being vaccinated at the moment. What the data also suggests, and this is interesting, is that over 4,000 participants with comorbidities took part in the clinical trial and uh, this vaccine is safe and efficacious for them as well. Interestingly, Dr. Krishna Ella, the chairman and managing director of Bharat Biotech, has also clarified that the vaccine is effective against the UK strain of the coronavirus. This is extremely important to note because remember the variants of uh, COVID-19 is now going to be the next big challenge that India along with the rest of the world is going to face. Now, having said that now we, when we encountered the phase 3 efficacy trial it was a challenging task for us. 
thanks to Director of the General of India and subject expert committees. They have all reviewed our protocols, they have approved us and then our ethical committees from all the institutes have gone through this drill of exercise of going through this uh, uh, problem. And um, after all that said, we are the only trial center, we have about 60 years old people and uh, we just got to know the data, that our efficacy data uh, clearly indicating around, trend, the trend indicating around 80.6. So 80.6 is our efficacy data as we got from the DSMB and we are disclosing to the public at large. Well, the total general population vaccinated so far, 5.94 lakh. The total number of beneficiaries over 60, 5.22 lakh. The total beneficiaries between the age of 45 with comorbidities, 71,896. The total number of vaccine doses administered till date, 1.56 crores. Vaccinations at this site have wrapped up for the day, but soon vaccinations will take place 24-7. Today, the Union Health Minister, Dr. Harshwardhan, tweeted to say that the government has removed time constraints to increase the speed of vaccination. People will be able to get vaccinated 24-7 and at their convenience. Prime Minister Narendra Modi understands the value of both time and health of the citizens. After just two days of vaccinating the general public, Delhi has more than doubled the number of hospitals to speedily vaccinate as many people as quickly as possible. These will start in a couple of days. We started with 56 private hospitals on the first day and then now, you know, as per yesterday's this thing, there are going to be 134 hospitals total so that they can start, you know, providing the services as early as possible so that there are no hitches and glitches and so that smooth vaccination program can be carried out. Private hospitals have welcomed the move. At Fortis Healthcare, we welcome this change made by the government. We are doing currently at 11 centres, we have been doing 1,000 to 1,500 vaccinations a day. With effect from today, three more centres have been added. We are in touch with the state authorities and have offered to carry out the campaign at all 28 of our locations across the country. So far, 20,000 private hospitals across India have been part of the vaccination drive. The numbers are expected to go up with the new initiative. In Maharashtra, the Mumbai municipality has added 29 more private hospitals as vaccination sites up from just three. Hospitals are willing for extra hours but are yet to receive fresh directions from the government. Currently, vaccination sites in Maharashtra operate between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. We are following all the BMC guidelines and in case uh, they change, we will follow them accordingly. For example, as you mentioned, about increase the timing and all. So as we get, we'll follow that. And uh, we, our target from day one was 100. We have already crossed that. Senior citizens like these are waiting across India for their turn. And the inclusion of more private hospitals in the vaccination drive will bring respite to many of them. With Surya Ganju in Mumbai and camera person Sushil Rati in New Delhi, this is Sukirti Duvedi for NDTV. Well, India is now seeing the 13th straight day of a rise in COVID cases, um, the average number of cases. It's the first since a peak which we hit in September. There's an urgency in vaccination rollout here in Punjab. Active cases at almost 5,200 and the weekly average today at over 600 are two and a half to three times more in just a month. But the pace of vaccination is worryingly low. On Feb 18, 275 cases, Feb 24, 558 cases, March 2, 730 cases, whereas many other states are vaccinating thousands daily. Punjab's weekly positivity rate 2.37 against the national average of 2%. Among five states adding max cases, Punjab ranks lowest in vaccinating beneficiaries. Once we realize the positivity is going up, so we uh, immediately raise this number to about 30,000 samples a day. So that uh, has helped us in detecting more cases early, which will help us uh, in treating people and also getting down the uh, death rate. In Haryana, at least 54 students are COVID positive. Out of samples of 390 pupils and staff members of Senik School in Haryana's Karnal, here too, cases have been shooting up. Haryana reported 1,054 new cases last week and 684 cases reported the week before. 
उस सबको इन्फोर्स किया जाए This has now prompted Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar to announce at least five free masks to those who are found without these in public, but also find them. Social distancing का विषय है या hand sanitization है या फिर mask लगाने की बात है उस सब को enforce किया जाए ऐसा हमने विचार किया और guidelines द्वारा से दी हैं कि सावधानी बना करके रखें. Haryana has managed to vaccinate over half the healthcare workers with the second dose of the COVID vaccine. Centre is sending alerts to those states which have been reporting maximum cases in the last couple of days. States like Haryana and Punjab have ruled out of imposing any lockdown, but orders have been issued to ensure that a strict compliance of COVID protocols is followed in the state. In Chandigarh, Mohamed Ghazali, Point TV. The Health Ministry's certificate confirming that you've taken the vaccine against COVID-19 has now run into a political problem. The Trinamool Congress has complained to the Election Commission that the Prime Minister's photograph on the certificates to people who have taken the first jab violates the Model Code of Conduct. Even the Prime Minister must have one. A digital certificate for the COVID jab he took and it must have his own face on it too. Model Code Violation Trinamool MP Derek O'Brien has complained to Election Commission and said the mugshot must go. On Atal Bihari Pajpi, he used his face for the Golden Square Quadrangle and then uh, Congress protested it and Election Commission ordered to mask the face, to cover the face. <laughs> गवर्नमेंट का पैसा से गवर्नमेंट जगह पर हुआ था इसलिए गवर्नमेंट उसको निकाल दिया प्राइवेट जगह पर नहीं होता है वो प्रक्रिया चल रहा है ना पहले से कोई अगर जो योजना शुरू हो जाता है ना उसको बंद नहीं करता बीच में द ईसीज अटेंशन हैज आल्सो बीन ड्रॉन बाय त्रिनमूल टू दिस इवेंट इन कोलकाता ट्यूसडे व्हेन द बीजेपी लीडर अलेजेडली प्रॉमिस्ड पेंशन टू कीर्तन सिंगर्स ओवर 60 Ads like this are also under scrutiny. At this petrol station, there's not just one advertisement featuring the Prime Minister, but two of them. And the Election Commission will have to step up and check every such ad of the Prime Minister and the Chief Minister to see if they violate the Model Code of Conduct. EC teams are out on the streets pulling down political banners and flags hanging from government property. But what of PM's face on the COVID certificate? Trinamool says it is hoping EC will not disappoint. With Jiti Shankar, Monadipa Banerjee, NDTV. In Tamil Nadu, Kamal Hassan has launched his campaign from MGR's constituency. As far as the Congress and the DMK are concerned, there is trouble. There is still no seat-sharing agreement. The DMK offered 18 seats. The Congress wants 35. The Karnataka Water Resources Minister Ramesh Jerkiholi finally resigned after his name surfaced in a sex tape. A social activist approached Bengaluru police and filed a complaint alleging that the woman in the tape was lured by the minister for a government job and that she was sexually exploited. The allegations against me are far from the truth. A clear investigation is needed is what Mr. Jarkiholi has said. A sex video scandal has claimed a Karnataka minister's job. Ramesh Jarkiholi resigned as the water resource minister after sources say a push by the central BJP leadership, perhaps with an eye on the election campaign in five states. Mr. Ramesh Jarkiwali has made it very clear he is no way involved in this sex scandal or anything, whatever you call. On a moral ground, he has resigned tender resignation to allow the investigation to happen. Though the minister has quit, the woman nor her family has complained yet, but a social worker, Dinesh Kolahali of Kanakpura complained to the police that the woman approached the minister for his permission to shoot dams using drones for a documentary. The minister promised the woman that he would get her a government job. The minister sexually exploited her on this promise. Jarki Holi, who is 60 years old, was the rebel Congress leader who mobilized other Congress MLAs to cross over to the BJP and helped BS Yadurappa become chief minister kaam jo ho raha hai 
वो हो रहा है कर्नाटक भवन में जो विधानसभा का जो दिल्ली का निवास माना जाता है यानी कि जो गवर्नमेंट हाउस में अगर ये सब काम हो रहा है इतने गंदगी का काम जो है तो बहुत सीरियस मामला है कर्नाटका चीफ मिनिस्टर येडियुरप्पा हैज नॉट येट रिएक्टेड विद निहाल किडवाई जॉशुआ चेन फॉर एनडी टीवी The Supreme Court has ruled that expressing views which are different from the government is not sedition at all. The Supreme Court was looking at a PIL filed against the former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Farooq Abdullah's and some remarks that he had made. The Supreme Court said unsubstantiated allegations against Farooq Abdullah, views different from the government cannot be termed seditious. The PIL against um, Farooq Abdullah were on his remarks on the abrogation of Article 370, the plea sought cancellation of Farooq Abdullah's Lok Sabha membership. The Supreme Court placed a fine of 50000 rupees for the pil against those who had filed the petition well rahul gandhi has said that the emergency in the 70s was a mistake but it is different in terms of uh, comparing that with what is happening today but bjp ministers as you shall see in this face off hit back at rahul gandhi that was a mistake absolutely uh, there was a mistake and there is a fundamental difference between what happened in the emergency and it was wrong and what is happening now uh, the rss is doing something fundamentally different um they are actually filling the institutions with their people so look even if we defeat the bjp in an election we are not going to get rid of their people in the institutional structure emergency a galti thi deri se kyun na ho राहुल गांधी उसको मानते हैं तो अच्छी बात है ऐसा कोई हमने किया नहीं शायद राहुल गांधी को उस समय सही इमरजेंसी क्या थी वो पता नहीं था सुप्रीम कोर्ट में हेबियस कार्पस में उस समय अटॉर्नी जनरल निरन डे को कोर्ट ने सवाल पूछा था कि इमरजेंसी है इसका मतलब ये भी है कि कोई पुलिस वाला अगर कोई व्यक्ति को गोली मार दे तो उसके परिवार को या उसको न्याय मांगने का अधिकार नहीं है तो उनने कहा था मिलॉर्ड दुर्भाग्य से यह सच है कि उसको अधिकार नहीं है यह इमरजेंसी थी आज ऐसी कौन सी इमरजेंसी Well speaking at the floor of the house today the Maharashtra chief minister has delivered a sharp blow on his former ally and principal opposition the BJP over the farmers protest the state's budget session saw a rough start with the BJP crying foul on the government's move to probe the BJP IT cell for tweets by celebrities Bangladesh cell Pakistan cell ya sima resha ugdya तिकडनं घुसकोर येत आहेत अतिरेकी येतात पण शेतकरी त्याच्या राजधानीत येता कामा नये म्हणून तुम्ही त्यांच्या मार्गात खेळ टाकताय काय शेतकरी अतिरेकी आहे काय शेतकरी गुन्हेगार आहे काय शेतकरी देशद्रोही आहे असं समजू नका की देश ही तुमची खाजगी मालमत्ता नाहीये देश ही या शेतकऱ्यांची सुद्धा मालमत्ता आहे कदाचित नाही ऐका पुढचं कदाचित शिवसेना तर स्वातंत्र्य लढ्यात नव्हती पण तुमची सुद्धा मातृसंस्था आहे ती सुद्धा स्वातंत्र्य लढ्यामध्ये कधी नव्हती म्हणून नुसतं भारत माता की जय बोललो तर देशप्रेम सिद्ध होत नाही सत्ता मिळाल्यानंतर देशातील नागरिकांना आणि देशातील जनतेला जर न्याय देत नसाल शेतकऱ्यांना जर तुम्ही आजच्या रस्त्यावरती ताटकळत ठेवत असाल तर भारत माता की जय बोलण्याचा अधिकार तुम्हाला नाही आहे